You already know about nuclear energy. In today's session, I will tell you about the various effects of radioactive pollution and the effects of a major nuclear disaster known as the Chernobyl disaster. Nuclear power technology produces materials that are active in emitting radiation and are therefore called radioactive. We are all exposed daily to a little radiation, but too much or in mass quantities can destroy cells, cause organs to shut down or after long and continuous exposure cause cancer. There are two types of radiations, non-ionizing and ionizing radiations. Non-ionizing radiations are short wave radiations such as UV rays. Long exposure of non-ionizing radiations affects the cells and molecules which absorb them. These radiations can inactivate biomolecules including DNA and RNA and increase the incidence of cancer and mutations. Ionizing radiations are radiations emitted by radioactive elements. Such radiations can cause burns, impaired metabolism and death of the organism. It can also cause cancer and gene mutation. There have been few hazards in the nuclear power plants. One among them is the Chernobyl disaster. It was a catastrophic nuclear accident that occurred on 26th April 1986 at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant in Ukraine. An explosion and fire released large quantities of radioactive particles into the atmosphere, which spread over much of the Western USSR and Europe. The Chernobyl disaster was the worst nuclear power plant accident in history in terms of cost and casualties. It is one of the only two classified as a level 7 on the international nuclear event scale, the other being the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear disaster in 2011. The disaster began during a systems test at reactor number 4 of the Chernobyl plant. There was a sudden and unexpected power surge and when an emergency shutdown was attempted, an exponentially larger spike in power output occurred. This led to a reactor vessel rapture and a series of steam explosions. These events exposed the graphite moderator of the reactor to air, causing it to ignite. The burning graphite moderator increased the emission of radioactive particles carried by the smoke as the reactor had not been encased by any kind of hard containment vessel. The accident occurred during an experiment scheduled to test a potential safety emergency core cooling feature, which took place during a normal shutdown procedure. The resulting fire sent a plume of highly radioactive fallout into the atmosphere and over an extensive geographical area. The plume drifted over large parts of Western Soviet Union and Europe. From 1986 to 2000, 3,50,400 people were evacuated and resettled from the most severely contaminated areas of Belarus, Russia and Ukraine. Russia, Ukraine and Belarus have been burdened with the continuing and substantial decontamination and health care costs of the Chernobyl accident. This image shows how the reactor looked after the explosion. The risk projections suggest that by now Chernobyl may have caused about 1000 cases of thyroid cancer and 4000 cases of other cancers in Europe, representing about 0.01% of all incident cancers since the accident. Models predict that by 2065, about 16,000 cases of thyroid cancer and 25,000 cases of other cancers may be expected due to radiation from the accident. People were evacuated the day after the explosion. A month later, 1,16,000 people in an 18 mile radius of the plant were evacuated. Over 3 lakh people were moved from the accident site. Many still live in contaminated areas and the long term effect is not yet known. The radiation levels in the worst hit areas of the reactor building have been estimated to be 5.6 Roentgens 
per second over 5 hours. So, in some areas unprotected workers received fatal doses in less than a minute. Here you can see some heart rendering pictures of the disaster. The fire was extinguished by a combined effort of helicopters dropping over 5000 metric tons of sand, lead, clay and neutron absorbing boron onto the burning reactor and injection of liquid nitrogen. From eyewitness accounts of the firefighters involved, one described his experience of the radiation as tasting like metal and feeling a sensation similar to that of pins and needles all over his face. The explosion and fire threw hot particles of the nuclear fuel and also far more dangerous fission products, radioactive isotopes such as cesium-137, iodine-131, strontium-90 and other radionuclides into the air. The residents of the surrounding area observed the radioactive cloud on the night of the explosion. The effects on people around the Chernobyl explosion were massive. An increase of thyroid cancer has been diagnosed among children in areas of Belarus, Ukraine and Russia. Some believe the stress of the accident has been worse on people than the radiation. Like many other releases of radioactivity into the environment, the Chernobyl release was controlled by the physical and chemical properties of the radioactive elements in the core. Particularly dangerous are the highly radioactive fission products, those with high nuclear decay rates that accumulate in the food chain such as some of the isotopes of iodine, cesium and strontium. Iodine-131 and cesium-137 are responsible for most of the radiation exposure received by the general population. At different times after the accident, different isotopes were responsible for the majority of the external dose. The economy was also greatly affected. Crops were destroyed, livestock was killed, and everywhere there was radiation. Over $235 billion has been spent to clean up the disaster. Belarus lost one-fifth of its farming lands. 350 industries were lost due to the disaster. There was immense residual radioactivity in the environment. Rivers, lakes and reservoirs were affected. The Chernobyl nuclear power plant was located next to the Pripyat River, which fed into the Dnieper Reservoir System, one of the largest surface water systems in Europe, which at the time supplied water to Kyiv's 2.4 million residents and was still in spring flood when the accident occurred. The radioactive contamination of aquatic systems, therefore, became a major problem in the immediate aftermath of the accident. Bioaccumulation of radioactivity in fish resulted in concentrations that in many cases were significantly above guideline maximum levels for consumption. Groundwater was not badly affected by the Chernobyl accident since radionuclides with short half-lives decayed away long before they could affect groundwater supplies and longer lived radionuclides such as radio cesium and radio strontium were adsorbed to surface soils before they could transfer to groundwater. Even livestock accumulate radioactivity in their meat and milk, thus all those who consume that in turn got affected. Today 5.5 million people still live in contaminated areas and the effect of radiations on them is unknown. People living in that area still continue to be exposed to low doses of radiation for decades to come. So now you have an overview of the Chernobyl disaster and how it affected mankind. Until we meet again, bye.